How's it going everybody? Um, so in this video I'm going to be talking about RMS voltage, I'm um, also talking about magnitude response, and then I'll try to prove to you that capacitors are DC open, uh, and also high frequency short, and I'll try to prove to you um, the opposite is true for inductors, that inductors are DC shorts and high frequency opens. Um, I was browsing the last video uh, real quickly and I noticed I kind of made a mistake here, or clarification error. Um, so if you have a function like sine of 2 pi f, um, omega is equal to 2 pi f, and omega is a frequency, um, it's just not the same as f. So omega is the angular frequency, um, and it's given in the, um, the units of radians per second, or rad per second, that's right here. Um, f is generally the frequency, and it's given in hertz, or 1 over seconds is the unit of that. So that's just a clarification. Um, next thing, let's talk about RMS voltage. So RMS voltage is given by this equation right here. Uh, RMS is the peak of a sinusoidal. This is the peak of a sinusoidal waveform, not a DC waveform. Um, and it's e so RMS voltage is equal to the peak of the sinusoid over square root of 2. Or a lot of people just simplify this, and they say it's actually roughly 70% times the peak voltage. Um, that's a pretty good approximation for any given circuit. So let's look at that real quick. Um, so, I think somewhere here, here we go. Uh, here I drew a real basic um, circuit. It's just a sine wave, uh, 5 volts amplitude at 1 kilohertz. And again, we can do that by right clicking, and if we click advance, it'll bring us to this window. Uh, 5 volt amplitude, 1 kilohertz frequency, doing a transient response. Um, and then I just have a couple of resistors just to see how the RMS voltage works. So, if I can simulate, simulate and run, uh, I think with this guy. So, let's see, I want the voltage here and the voltage here. So I click the top of this resistor and the middle of these two resistors, and I should get two waveforms. So, here you're actually showing that your voltage divider is working. Uh, it works in DC, and your voltage divider also works in AC as well, so that's just, you know, good to know. Um, so here's the voltage across that lower resistor, I believe, um, and then the larger waveform, yeah, has the voltage across that top resistor. Um, so if we do this, we can hold control, hold the control key, hold the control key, and left click on the voltage or the waveform. Uh, this guy up here, the name of the waveform. So if I click this, uh, it gives me a couple of things. It gives me an average. Um, actually, the average should be zero since it's uh, cycling around zero volts, but it's roughly zero, one millivolt. Uh, it also gives you the RMS value. So hopefully, if you multiply five by 0.707. Uh, you'll get about this value right here. So that's just a quick way of calculating the RMS and LT spice. And similarly, I can do that here. So I hold the control key, and I click this other voltage, um, and you can see I get 1.1506 volts. So I'm assuming that would be 0.707 of whatever this is, which looks to be about 1.5 volts or so. So that's the RMS voltage. And remember, the RMS is just the uh, essentially the DC uh, kind of equivalent value of an AC or a sinusoidal signal. So, let's see, what's next on my list here? Um, I think next we have the magnitude response, yeah. So, a magnitude response is a frequency response. And what that's saying is basically you're going to, uh, at least in LT Spice, you want to sweep a frequency from, usually from 0 hertz or DC. So, 0 hertz is a non-changing signal. So, 0, that's very important, let me write that down. 0, let's see, over here. Um... 0 hertz is equivalent to DC. And I should put that in big, bold letters um, because that's a very important fact. Um, it's true for uh, all circuits, and you just need to know this. So um, just something to be aware of. Um, let's see what else. So magnitude response. Um, so I have a couple circuits here. The first one is a capacitor in series with a resistor. And um, to do a magnitude response, I need to do an AC sweep. So like I was saying, so if I go to Edit Simulation Command, um, you can see I have this AC analysis, so that's going to be an AC sweep. So you can choose a couple types of sweeps, uh, octave, decade, linear. I usually choose decade um, because if you want to go to high frequencies, it's better to go from, you know, a decade is just a log scale. Um, so I'll choose decade there. Uh, number of points per decade, 10 is usually good enough. Uh, you could do a lot more if you wanted to. Start frequency. Uh, it doesn't let you start at zero hertz uh, for some reason. So I usually start at a really, if I really do want to start at zero hertz, I start at a low frequency, which is 0 0.01. So that's effectively zero hertz. And then I'm going to go up to 100 kilohertz. So that's my stop frequency. 
So to press OK, it brings up with this box here, and you can just place that. And then notice that for your voltage source, you have to call it AC1, and that goes into the value slot. So if you right-click this, um, let me actually delete this. I'm going to put a new voltage source in there, and see it has this value V. If you right-click that, you need to give it the value of AC1. And that'll give it, that'll tell uh, LT Spice that you want to do a magnitude response with this being your uh, driving uh, voltage source. So we click Run, uh, and then I'm going to click the top of the capacitor, and here is what I get. So this is a magnitude response, typically. Uh, you can tell it's magnitude because it has dB, usually on the left-hand side, and on the uh, x-axis down here, it has frequency. So if I go over here to lab report, and here's that magnitude response, I can zoom in on that. Um, well, very similar to this in that it has, at low frequencies, approximately 0 dB. So if you, uh, if you look at the equation for dB, which is right uh, somewhere, here we go. It's 20, the uh, equation for calculating dB from a decimal value is the transfer function or whatever your value is, is equal to 20 log base 10 of V out over V in. So what this is saying is that low frequencies, your output voltage is 0 volts, or rather it's 5 volts. So 5 volts over your V in, um, I think 5 volts, or whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter. Um, in any case, at low frequencies, your capacitor is an open circuit. And you can tell that because your transfer function here is equal to 1. So your output voltage is the same as your input voltage. That's all this is saying. And I can explain this a little better in class. Um, I know it's a little confusing right now. And then as you come up here in frequency, uh, you actually drop dramatically. So if you do this, put this in your calculator, minus dB, um, that's a huge value in terms of uh, DC. So this is effectively a short by the time you even, actually, by the time this curves down to minus 3 dB, this is becoming a short circuit in your, uh, in here. So that's a magnitude response, uh, and then we can do the same thing for inductor. And remember that I made a note here, capacitor is a low frequency or DC open. So in this case, it's actually an open till about right here, till about mm, 1 hertz. Uh, give or take, and it's also a high frequency, high frequency short, and that's you know down here in this region. Uh, so we can do the same thing for an inductor, and since inductors and capacitors are kind of inverses of one another, we should expect to see the opposite. So instead of getting a decaying graph here, we should get more like a rising graph. So let's go ahead and just do this. So I already have the AC, and oh, interesting, I have octaves in there, so I'll change that to decades. Um, and then AC1, and then I just gave these a couple values, it doesn't really matter. Click Run, and I have a lot of circuits up here, so here that is. Um, so here we go, again, at low frequencies, uh, in this case, a inductor is a short circuit at DC voltages, and then as you get to higher frequencies, an inductor becomes an open circuit. Um, so we see that's the opposite of what it was for the capacitor. So that is a magnitude response, and the next thing I want to show you is an example, um, and this will be very helpful in doing the LT Spice assignment I'm going to give you. So the LT Spice is going to be calculating a capacitance, and then I'm going to have you simulate your uh, your calculations in LT Spice to prove that it's correct. So here's a circuit you're going to have, and you're going to have a voltage source. It's going to be a sine wave, and I'm going to tell you the frequency and the amplitude. But for this circuit, it's a 5-volt amplitude, 100 hertz frequency for the voltage source. And the resistor won't matter, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, and capacitor, I set to 10 microfarads here. So I'm going to click Simulate and Run, and then I'll find, I want to know the voltage across the capacitor. And that is down here. Okay, so here's the voltage across the capacitor. You can see it actually is falling, and this is part of that uh, capacitors are not instantaneous. So the region you want to look for is the one where it's settled and kind of everything looks the same. You don't really want to focus on that up here. Um, so this is the voltage across the capacitor, and as you can see, it's about, uh, let's see, 0.8 volts, uh, and it's a cosine wave or a sine wave. It doesn't really matter. Um, so if I go over here, I'm starting to take notes on this. So the voltage across my capacitor is given right here. It's 0.8, which is the voltage, uh, the max voltage, so, you know, 0.8 volts. And it's multiplied by a sine, or it is a sine wave at 100 hertz, so that's the frequency. And then you have to multiply that by 2 pi, and it's times t, so that's just the variable for any given time, and the units are volts, right? 
Okay, so we have the VC of T, so the next thing we need is IC, and I actually wrote that up here, but let's go ahead and look at it in our circuit. Um, so to find IC, I just, you know, hover over here and double click, and that'll bring up the current through the capacitor, and here it is. So you can see it has that little uh, settling time here, but then once you get up here, it's pretty stable. And I approximated this to about 5 milliamps, so 5 milliamps it's going to have the same frequency, and if you don't believe the frequency is the same, you can actually plot the voltage across and the current through at the same time. So the green waveform here is the voltage, and the blue waveform is the current. The blue, uh, you can see the current is on the right-hand axis, and on the left-hand axis is volts. So make sure you don't get those confused, uh, it'll mess up your calculations. And then up here you can see the green corresponds to the voltage, and the blue corresponds to the current. So then you have your current and you have your voltage. And notice that they're offset by 90 degrees. So obviously one's a sine and one's a cosine. Um, I'm going to let the voltage be a sine because I know I want to integrate. And since I'm going to be integrating it, it would be easier if I don't have those minus signs. So just let the voltage be a sine wave and let the current be a cosine wave. And that will make your calculation simpler. So over here, uh, oops, I have my current set to 5. Um, times the cosine wave, same frequency, you can see that over here, it's the same frequency. Uh, notice the milliamps, so there's a 10 to the minus 3 factor in here, so that's important, just keep that in mind. So the next thing I need to do, and I uh, already solved this equation for C, real simple, it just starts off with this guy up here and just solve it for C. Um, so you do that, and then you need to take the derivative of the voltage. So I take the derivative, dvc dt, and I get this. So basically it's that 0.8 volts, and it's also times the angular frequency, Right, because you integrate, or you take the derivative of the sine and you multiply by inside chain rule function, uh, chain rule, you know, blah blah blah, calculus. Um, okay, so you get all this nasty stuff, and then you come to calculate the capacitance. And if you plug in all this junk, you get five times the cosine milliamps over all this times the cosine in volts per second. Conveniently, there's a cosine two pi hundred t. And down here is a cosine of 2 pi 100t. So those just cancel out. And that's probably going to be true for any simple equation you have with a capacitor or an inductor. And then you're left with a 5 times 10 to the minus 3 because of this milli up here. And on the bottom you have a 0.8 times 2 pi times 100. And the units of uh, capacitance are farads, so I just put that here. And you will crank that out and you get 9.92 microfarads. So I'm hoping I have roughly around 10 um, microfarad capacitor. And if I come here, boom, 10 microfarads. So you can see that's just a mathematical way to prove the capacitance. Um, I'm going to have you do the inverse of this in the LT Spice extra credit assignment. So I'm going to give you um, this waveform, and I'm going to give you, I think, the current and the voltage, and I'm going to ask you to calculate the capacitance. And then you're also going to simulate this in LT Spice. So you're going to do the same simulation, except you'll be going backwards. You're going to do the math first, and then you're going to build the circuit and verify with a plot that it does what it's supposed to. Uh, so I think that is it for this video, um, and I will see you next week.